This program is brought to you by Real Estimate, Australia's number one property value estimate. Get your real estimate today on realestate.com.au. Welcome back. There are 3,903 homes scheduled to be auctioned this week. That's the busiest week of auctions so far this year. New South Wales will hold about 1,350 auctions with about 1,200 in Sydney. Victoria will hold about 1,900 auctions with about 1,800 of them in Melbourne. Queensland will hold almost 400 auctions with about 240 in Brisbane. South Australia will hold about 190 auctions with most of them in Adelaide. Western Australia, the NT and Tasmania will hold 20 auctions between them and the ACT will hold 108 auctions. Take a look at the most viewed properties going to auction this weekend. And in New South Wales, the top property is 16 Avery Street, Normanhurst. This four bedder has two bathrooms, a large pool and parking for two cars. Price guide is $1.35 million. The top property in Victoria is number 22 Merton Close, Mount Waverley. This large five bedder has four bathrooms, two kitchens, two parking spots. Price guide is $1.95 to $2.1 million. Top property in Queensland is 78 Bilyana Street, Balmoral. This cute little three bedroom cottage is close to the Brisbane CBD and the Brisbane River. There's lots of natural light and trees. Top property in South Australia is 11 Thomas Avenue, St Morris. This large four bedder sits on about 900 square metres, has two bathrooms and a giant swimming pool. There's also a big backyard. Price guide is $1.4 million. And the top property in Western Australia is 10B Thelma Street, Como. This home has an industrial feel with lots of polished concrete, exposed brick and black finishes. It's got three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And the most viewed property on the REA Group website this week is number 39 Bilarong Street, Morningside. It's in Brisbane. It's been described as a cross between a mountain lodge and a winery. This massive home is one of the largest acreage properties in close proximity to the Brisbane CBD. It sits on about 4,000 square metres. A creek runs through the backyard. There's also lots of trees, grassy areas, a bridge over that creek and a fire pit retreat area. The house is all black and made of wood, concrete and colour bond. There's about 800 square metres of internal space. The home has six bedrooms, a media room and a study. There's also four bathrooms, a powder room, parking for two cars and a driveway with space for extra vehicles. There's no price guide on this one. Agents say they're taking offers. And for more on property, I caught up with Eleanor Cray from REA Group a little bit earlier. We started by talking about this weekend's auctions. Yeah, exactly right. So we've seen the auction activity has been pretty strong so far this year and 2024 has certainly kicked off busily. Um, but this weekend is set to be the busiest weekend of the year so far, likely driven by a bit of a surge in selling activity before um, that Easter holiday weekend, uh, the, the weekend after. Um, but we are seeing uh, significant, uh, significantly higher auction volumes relative to the same period last year. So this weekend, 57% more auctions relative to wow. the same weekend last year. And how have clearance rates been holding up for the past few weeks? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question because you might think with the uptick in uh, auction selling volumes that maybe clearance rates would be slipping a little bit lower. Yeah. But actually, we're seeing that clearance rates are holding up pretty firm. Uh, so I think it's evident that that uh, or that stronger home buying demand environment that we saw emerging last year has continued into this year. Uh, and... Uh, demand has been able to absorb the uptick in uh, properties that we've seen coming to market. So auction clearance rates last year uh, were, uh, I mean, last week were 63%. Um, so strong. holding up pretty firm, yeah. And how much activity are you seeing on the REA website right now? Is there a lot of interest with almost 4,000 homes going under the hammer this weekend? Look, we are seeing uh, that home buying demand remains pretty resilient, both buyer and seller confidence probably being buoyed by the fact that interest rates have uh, remained on hold for, for a period of several months now, uh, and certainly strong population growth, very tight rental markets, and that slowdown in the completion of new homes continuing to buoy buyer demand uh, and see prices continuing to rise, um, which is likely contributing to the continued strength in activity or resilience in conditions that we're seeing. We are seeing that sales activity as well is a lot stronger than this same period last year. Uh, so if we look at Sydney, sales volumes in Sydney are up 36% year on year compared to February last year. Uh, and in Melbourne, they're up 30% uh, year on year compared to, to February last year. 
when do things start to slow down? Because I know we've got the public holiday next week and then the week after. When do things kind of slow as we go into winter? Yeah, look, we do typically see that there is a bit of a seasonal slowdown in activity um, as we approach those winter months uh, before we see that reacceleration again uh, into the spring selling season. So we'll probably see uh, in, in the months after Easter, so kind of um, May slowing a little bit, June, July, that, that seasonal slowdown in activity before the spring selling season kicks off again. All right, today you've released a home energy report. What's it actually looking at? That's exactly right. So the, the PropTrack Origin Australian Home Energy Report really uh, details the significant value that uh, prospective buyers and renters uh, and even those looking to build a home are placing on energy, efficient, uh, energy efficiency features at the moment. Uh, so the report details uh, that really a, a majority of uh, those looking to buy, uh, rent or even build a home do place a value on energy efficiency features. Now that's driven by, um, of course, a, a desire to reduce environmental impact, but also a large driver of that is to reduce energy bills, which makes sense, right, given we're in the midst of the cost of living crisis, and that's certainly seen a squeeze on household budgets. So I, I think households, um, both buyers and renters alike, looking to, to reduce uh, their energy bills at the moment with energy efficiency features. And it's quite interesting, solar panels are, are by far the most preferred energy efficiency feature. Yeah, uh, solar panels, they're becoming more and more prevalent now. You get on a plane, you can just see so many across all the suburbs across Sydney, Melbourne. I mean, how important is it to reduce people's costs these days through electricity and cheaper electricity? So certainly we know uh, that uh, residential housing accounts for around 10% uh, of carbon emissions in Australia. So in order to, um, I guess, lower our environmental impact, lower our carbon footprint and also reduce energy bills, uh, energy efficiency features are certainly a way uh, that households can do that. And, and we're certainly seeing that there is a strong preference uh, for energy efficiency features. Uh, and many think that these do add value uh, to the value of a property. So potentially more desirable to buy. Yeah, exactly right. And renters as well, they're interested in saving money too. <laughs> renters certainly being driven by that strain on the hip pocket at the moment. Um, you know, rental affordability has it, it's at its worst level on record. We've seen significant increases in rental uh, prices right around the country. And certainly for renters, uh, energy efficiency features and, and energy efficient appliances can be one way to reduce energy bills and reduce that, that strain that we've seen on household budgets. Well, Eleanor Cray from REA Group, thanks for coming on the program this afternoon. Thank you for having me.